Hey everybody, welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today I'm going to talk about my six pro tips on getting the most out of digital modes like FT8. This will work with JSA Call. These are all going to be subtle tweaks you can do within your software, within your computer, within your radio to get more contacts. And yeah, they're all things that are going to be super easy and anything that involves software is going to be free software. So it should take you I assume maybe 30 minutes to do this, and I guarantee you enhanced or increased contacts on FT8 and other modes that are similar to that. Uh, this should work with PSK31 uh, and JSA Call and among many others, but this is my tip, so let's get started. All right, so tip one. I won't hold back the big tips. This is the biggest tip. If you do this, you're gonna help yourself out and you're gonna help out everybody around you that's doing FT8. I got that waterfall big and large on the right side of the screen here. We're gonna talk about finding a lane and sticking to your lane. All right, so FT8 transmission sizes are 50 hertz, meaning that every step or place that you pl place your transmit location on the waterfall should be in 50 hertz increments. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about, okay? There's a lot of stuff going on in this waterfall. If you look right here down at the bottom of the 1500 hertz space, they've got like a zipper effect going on. Whoever's transmitting here is on like 970 or um, 1475 and 1525 and they're they're bridging between two 50 hertz cycles so they're bleeding into another station up here as well it looks like somebody else is bleeding into it there's a couple other ones where it looks like they move halfway through transmission here's another one where the person isn't lined up so what you want to do it's really simple this is an easy step you find a space somewhere where there's an opening after watching for a while like this. I'm not um, actually monitoring, I just have this frozen for a second, but I want to show you what this looks like. We're going to go to 1500 hertz. You right click on 1500, right on the little hash mark, and you say set RX and TX offset. Click it. Now, you might be off by a couple of hertz, but this is easy to fix. Go up to the WSJTX window under the TX spot, just use the toggle to click it down to 1500, or you can click in here and change it to whatever you want. Maybe you want to move to 1400 for instance and then click the hold TX frequency and you should be good to go so that's tip one find a lane find a space that you're working in stick it within 50 Hertz so you're not stacking up you know these zipper effects all these things are making it inefficient for people to make contacts not just you but whomever's also in the same space as you periodically here's something to go along with this tip periodically pause your QSOs if for some reason you're making QSOs like crazy and you stop hearing anybody, stop what you're doing and look at the waterfall. It is entirely likely that somebody is transmitting right on top of you. So find a new spot and get back to it. There's tip. All right, tip two, time. Time is very important in WSJTX, FT8, JSA call, you name it. I run something called Dimension 4. It's free software. It runs its startup. It'll basically find an online time source and sync your clock on your computer. This isn't going to affect everybody, but the people it does affect, it's going to affect them very badly. If you're off by a second to two seconds, it can affect when you start transmitting and when you start receiving within that 15 second cycle on WSJTX. So if you don't want to use Dimension 4, that's okay. Consider something like NTP, Network Time Protocol, or possibly even GPS as a time source. My problem with Windows time sources, and largely it has to do with some hardware selections, but whatever the time sources is in certain computers will start to slip away over time. It'll start to walk away. And if you don't have an accurate time source with modes like these, you're going to have problems. So consider getting something like Dimension 4, which is what I use, free software, easy tip. Tip number two. Okay, tip number three, we're back to transmitting. Your radio is working in conjunction with your computer when you're using digital modes. And you need to make sure the volume output that's going into your radio is appropriately set. We often refer to that as ALC. So on your radio, turn your ALC meter on and pay attention to what your ALC is when you're transmitting. If for some reason that ALC is too high, go to the right side of the WSJTX window and adjust this power slider. And watch on your radio and dip that down to where it's supposed to be. On the 7300, 
I like to put the ALC just barely licking the bottom of the meter. I only want like one bar on the left hand side and that's it. And I find that that works really effectively. If you don't do this, what's going to happen is you could have a really, really large signal and it's going to splatter. When we talked about the 50 hertz transmit size, well, if you've got too much ALC, too much drive in your audio, the rate, the volume coming into the radio, you're going to transmit on a wider space and splatter over onto the 50 hertz to the left and right of you on WSJATX's waterfall. You're not going to see it because you're transmitting, but everybody else is going to be affected by it. You'll know this, you'll know this is happening when you see somebody that has just this massive, massively bright transmit square for their 50 hertz or rectangle. And then they've got like a gradient effect on the left and right side of their transmission. You can tell that they're splattering really, really hard. So keep an eye on your ALC. Every time you change your power output, if you turn your amp on, anything like that, check your ALC and it'll help you out a lot. Tip three. All right, tip four. We're flipping it around now to your receive side. And we're going to be talking about your radio's AGC, Alpha Golf Charlie. Now, on the 7300, the AGC is really, really easy to set. On other radios, your mileage will vary. So you may have to crack a manual open to figure this out or look for a, a tip on Google on how to do it. But generally, you're going to want your AGC setting to be fast. And I suggest you start with fast, try that out, see how it does for you. You may already be using fast. Here's the kind of modification of this tip. Turn your AGC off completely if you have the capability to do that. On the 7300, it's relatively easy. You just click the function button, hold down the AGC button, click the fast square on the left-hand side, and then roll the VFO all the way to the left. That's AGC off. Make sure your volume is turned down when you do this because AGC off will be louder than anything you thought your radio would be capable of creating. And it will be putting a ton of sound into your computer's sound card and it could overload it. So you're also going to likely want to use the menu settings on your radio to reduce the sound output of your radio. I've found that when turning the AGC off and controlling the volume in the radio that goes into the computer, I pick out more signals. I get a much fuller waterfall. You will likely see something like this too, particularly if you weren't using AGC fast at all. So try out both ways. Try out AGC fast, maybe try AGC off and see how you do. All right, tip five is more of a philosophical point uh, than a logistical point per se. FT8, JSA call, and other digital modes, they're not necessarily low power modes. There are digital modes that are more on the low power side, like Whisper. But FT8, you can use as much power as you need to to make the contact you're trying to get. If you're trying to work DX, you can crank up the power. If you're trying to find a de-expedition, you can crank up the power. If you're trying to work your buddy and you guys are having trouble, you can crank up the power a little bit. I have definitely used the 7300 in 100 watt output on FT8. Seems to do fine for it. The temperature gauge never gets too high that it is unsafe. And I have definitely turned the amp on to get some DX expedition contacts. So while FT8 is fantastic for pulling out signals deep down in the, the noise down to the tune of negative 24 dB. That doesn't mean that you can only use QRP or should be under 25 watts or should be under 30 watts, etc, etc. There was no rule stating that there's nothing wrong with using more power if you need to. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on that ALC when you do it because cranking more power means you could be overdriving and creating a problem for your neighbors. Again, make sure you're picking a lane. See, all these tips are coming back together. You're going to be a good operator, and you're going to get more contacts with them. So I hope that helps. Okay, so what's my last tip? My last tip is use a QSO helper like Grid Tracker. This is N-O-T-T-L tags software creation Grid Tracker that you see with the map to my left. I'm working this N9 CDX person, William Hulse. Uh, he's in Illinois right now. Got a good signal into me, too. Anyway, I, I totally recommend using something like this because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of working FT8. You know, if there's call signs that I need to hit, like this KD0, oh, he's gone now, um, I can go ahead and work them really easily. And 
like there's uh, KE0GSZ is, is calling me right now, so I can slide that over. But it gives you a list of everything that your radio is hearing or WSJTX is hearing. It'll give you call sign. It'll give you grid. It'll make them solid if you haven't worked them before. I don't have any states I haven't covered, and I'm not really hearing any DX right now. But that would show up here, too. As well, it also gives you your PSK spots. All these orange lines are my PSK spot. And this dark or this thick green back and forth line is the station I'm currently working. Grid Tracker makes this a lot easier, particularly if you're chasing awards or anything like that. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. It makes WSJTX really easy to use. The best part about it is it's free. I did a video on it with TAG where we went through pretty much all the features. And it's a fantastic piece of kit. Again, it's uh, free to use, very simple to set up. You just install it and kind of point it at your WSJTX, and, and you're good to go. So that would be my recommendation is use a QSO helper when you're running WSJTX or other modes that use it. So that'll do it. Please post in the comments after you try some of these and tell me how they work for you. I have used these. I've been using these for a very long time. Uh, I do very well on digital modes like FT8 and JSA Call. I can get pretty much all around the continental United States and I can work DX, particularly from the West Coast to Asia and Australia and New Zealand, etc. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts and if these work for you. If you could, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell because I live stream 5 p.m. every Saturday Pacific Standard Time. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.